Hello, this is Robert Whitaker, and welcome to Hansford County Heritage uh, Journeys Through Time. Uh, today is episode two, and we're going to listen to the uh, life and times of Gwenfred Jones Lackey. Uh, a short little history about my family. Uh, my family came to Hansford County in the 60s. My grandfather purchased a uh, irrigated farm southwest of Groover, and we also ended up leasing uh, the Groover Turkey Track, or what we called the Coble Place, uh, from the Wittenberg family for a lot of years with the rock house on it near the Paldur Creek. And the Jones family and the Lackeys um, were neighbors of ours on that ranch. So, you know, we had some, we shared some fence line with them and, and they were definitely great folks. Uh, Gwenford is uh, Joel Lee Lackey's mother. Uh, I think, I think it was his mother. I can't remember. Um, it's too bad, you know, that uh, the reason I'm doing this podcast is, is some of our history is getting away from us here in the county. And some of these folks, uh, you know, we, we may not even know anymore uh, in, the, in the younger generations like myself and, and my own kids. Um, so that's why we're doing this. That's this is why we're having this um, website and, and these podcasts. So uh, today uh, you're going to hear uh, Ms. Lackey talk about uh, her family who were early, early settlers of the county. Uh, you're also going to hear talk about uh, the Battle of the Adobe, Adobe Walls, which was a famous uh, battle here not far, uh, just in North Hutchinson County, uh, not far from Hansford County. And uh, a lot of the, the folks that uh, were in North Hutchinson County uh, interacted with folks in Hansford County, just like, still look, just like they do today. And you're also going to hear talk about uh, her art, uh, some of the paintings that she done. Uh, she had done when, when uh, you know, she was alive. So uh, this will be a uh, great podcast for those of you uh, who who have memory of the Lackeys and uh, and of the Jones families. And we certainly have good memories of them. They were, they were great neighbors of ours. So here we go, episode two, with uh, Grinfred Jones Lackey. Thank you, Dwayne. Good morning, everyone. We really have an honor this morning, our honored guest, and an honor to us, really, is Mrs. Gwenfred Jones Lackey, Her Majesty. She was the Pioneer Day Queen of 1969, the Pioneer Days of Gammon, Oklahoma. Gwenfred, we really appreciate you coming down. And I want to thank Joel because uh, he took the morning off and brought you down to be our guest. Well, he had to. I couldn't get my car out. Uh, he had you I'm, blocked, huh? I, no, it was uh, ice, ice. Oh, that's right. It is. I, can, I haven't had that since Sunday. <laughs> so we had to have Joel come down. We appreciate it very much. We're going to be reminiscing about a lot of things. Uh, among other things, Gwenford, of course, is a fine artist, and she has captured a lot of the early day scenes around the area with many, many beautiful paintings. Our program this morning is brought to you by White House Lumber Company. Ah, here's some uh, prints that she brought along. Is this the old homestead? No, that's the Tyler house. That's up at Morris. I put them as they come. Uh-huh. Uh, these are all photographs of your All paintings. my paintings. Uh-huh. And then and what the is this one here? Uh, that is the old stockade and Zulu post office and was a trading post. Now, the Tyler house is near Morris, but uh, it has fallen in. The last year they just left it go and uh, well now this was a stone house wasn't yes, it? yes rock and had a full basement and, uh, of oh i guess 18 inches or or thick two, thick, thick all the way a basement the entire house and it's uh, i wonder if there's uh, we need to put on some kind of a drive to uh, rehabilitate these old places and make uh, make uh, a kind of a museum out of them or something. Now, now that, you said this was a fort, is that right? Well, it was Zulu, po- Zulu uh, Post Office. The Caters, you've heard a lot about, yes, but Jim uh-huh. Cater and uh, uh, and Mr. McCray, uh, they built this and they had the post office. And where was this located? Now, this is uh, 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 near the Paladero, uh, you know, where Ed Rafferty's feedlot. Yes, yes. and you go west and then on the creek over near the 
the ranch house of Hawkins, still on the Hawkins place. But there isn't anything there now, only a few rocks. And we're going to talk about all of these places. We're going to talk about when you first came here, or were you born in this area? I was born out of, in his in, home. Uh, in Joel's house, huh? And uh, we're going to talk about that and many, many other things. A lot of your paintings. We're just going to have a wonderful time with Winfred Lackey this morning, right after this message from White House Lumber. Our guest this morning, we're honored to have with us Mrs. Winfred Jones Lackey. And we found out during that commercial that uh, she's a foreigner. She's smiling. <laughs> no, not really. She's a native Texan. Now, are you native Texan? Yes, you were born near Groover, South Groover. I was born on, in the house that Joe Lee lives. Yes. And uh, tell us something about your parents and your grandparents and the, uh, the countries they came from. Well, my uh, father's mother came uh, with eight children. Uh, my grandfather died in Wales. Uh -huh. And she came, uh, it was in the fall, with her eight children, the oldest one 16 and the youngest one five. And my daddy was nine years old on the ship that they came. And uh, what year was that, do you remember? 70, 19, 1870. And uh, so you are Welsh then? I'm Welsh. And uh, how about the, uh, the other side of the family? Uh, my grandparents came from Germany in 1870 and lived uh, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And my, gr my mother was born in Pennsylvania. So, uh, you're a native Texan, but actually you're descendant of uh, Welsh and uh, German. German descent. And uh, you were born December the 31st. You were almost a Christmas present, weren't yeah, you? Yeah, I am almost have a birthday, too. Yes. Uh, Joel, do you remember that? <laughs> Gwenford is going to have a birthday December well, 31st. Both uh, grandparents uh, uh, came to Topeka, Kansas. That's where they made their home. That's where my mother and my father met when they were youngsters. Now, uh, you were born in the same house that Joel lives in now. Yeah. So how old is that house? Do you know? Yeah, it's, it was uh, as old as I am, 78, it 79. It was just built there. Uh-huh, it was built for me. Is that it right? was uh, That house was a store building at Farwell. Farwell, you know, they started a little town out yes. just east of Groover. Uh-huh. And uh, uh, they, they wanted the county seat. Well... There weren't many voters, you know, but Hansford got the county seat, so that little town of Farwell was only there a few years, and they went back to Illinois. They were Illinois people. The people that established the established town. Established the town. Uh -huh. And uh, all the few ranchers on the creek, uh, I don't know, uh, I let my father die before I got interested in uh, all this. And so you And uh, uh, anyway, uh, I don't know who they bought these buildings from, but my father got the store and the blacksmith shop, and my uncle got the liver stable. And uh, and I believe it was a, a meat market, I believe. Uh, and all, uh, all the uh, ranch people got one house or two from far well, and then they, that was all. And then the town just disintegrated then. Uh, what was the country like in those days, Grinford, up here? Well, it was... Uh, uh, How far was it to your closest neighbor, for example? Well, my uncle just lived over the hill. Uh, a couple of miles or so. Oh, no, it's only a mile. About a mile. short mile. Uh -huh. and, uh, and then uh, the McKay place was about two and a half miles and the cater I'm going up the creek yes, and uh -huh. the caters were about a mile and a half from there and up to Zulu and uh, and uh, then on and I didn't get away very much saying that <laughs> uh, what was the means of transportation horseback and horseback and buggy buggies and wagons, wagons. Uh -huh. didn't have any cars at all no. oh no we had our first car 19 uh, uh, 12. 19, what kind the of Buick, car? Buick. Buick. And it had the first doors that were put on the rear uh, So you seat. didn't have to climb uh, over. Uh, well, they, they had them, but they didn't have any doors. Uh, they had the, well, you'd say a four-door, but uh -huh. there were no doors on. 
Uh-huh. And uh, uh, this car, 1912, uh, had the first doors that, that were opened. that opened, uh-huh. but no no top. We didn't have a top, no. and it cost twelve hundred and fifty dollars. And uh, how fast would they go? Oh, about fifteen miles an hour, <laughs> and we had to stop many times. I've helped push up just a little raise, you know, until my brother would drive. Uh, when we'd be going places, and uh, my mother and daddy and we three would get out and help them over the high place. <laughs> you didn't have any roads to speak of? In no, just, just wagon roads. Uh-huh. And really no fills like we have now. No. You had to no. go down into the creeks and so forth. Yes. No bridges, I guess. Very few. Uh, what was the principal means of support here then? Uh, cattle? Well, uh, cattle. Ranching. It was all ranching. You saw cattle drives take place then, didn't you? Yes. Uh, Did you ever participate in any of them? Well, no, only with our own. Uh, We've driven ours. uh, Where did you drive them to? Well, uh, they shipped to Liberal, my first recollection. Didn't have a railroad to Guyman. The railroad was at uh, Tyrone. That's one about 10 miles uh, southwest to Liberal, and they had to drive to Liberal to ship. But when my mother and father were married, uh, Dodge City was the closest railroad, and Harold, Texas, and they each were uh, wow. hundred, uh, 200 miles, 200 miles so from you- here to uh, Harold, Texas, and to Dodge City. Well, which way did they go most of the time? To Dodge City? Uh, yes, we didn't go to Harold. Uh, my daddy has, has used to go way down uh, that direction and buy cattle, you know, the, the ranch. That's where they got their cattle and drive them up here. And then a lot of people went through to Montana with these uh, herds of cattle, but I don't, I don't remember that. Uh, I wasn't very big. Now, Harold is down by Vernon, isn't it? It, it, well, it's 200 miles, yes, it's down the And uh, so the days, uh, those days, you, what'd you do for fuel? Uh, I had wood. And uh, we, we had a few cow chips. We, yes. did, we didn't burn cow chips, but most of the people on the prairie burned cow chips when there they There was came. not much wood around. Wasn't any, they could, we had, you see, the creek was settled. And, and the people that came filed on the land, on uh, flats as we call it. Uh, there wasn't any wood and there were no trees. But down around the streams? The we trees. we had wood. Uh-huh. Now, how about the days of the Indians? Were you, can you remember yes, the Indians? Yes, I, I remember, but they were civilized then. And they would, uh, from New Mexico, some of those reservations, and down into the Indian Territory, they used to come through uh, once a year to visit their kin. Uh-huh. And uh, oh, we happened to be, uh, I had a brother, uh, uh, he's three years older now, and we had to make our own amusements, so we were playing down at this blacksmith shop with the, with the uh, calves, uh-huh. uh, the milk cows' calves. And we heard jingle, 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 and uh, we knew what it was. And uh, we had this wall that, uh, those corrals, and I can see my brother, he jumped up there and peeped over and said, Indians. And there were about 150 horses and Indians, and they had bells on a lot of those horses. And we got to the house, and my mother was always afraid of Indians. <laughs> so uh, she closed all the doors and, and locked them and pulled the blinds down, and of course, you know, they... They didn't bother they, you. No, they, my daddy loved the Indians. See, he was the, uh, they first lived at Mobiti, and uh, uh, they had a lot of Indians uh, down there. Now, uh, uh, I can't recall when uh, this uh, Battle of Adobe Walls took place. Was uh, that after you were born? Oh, yeah. Uh, no, no. 1874. And you were born in 1894. 94. So, so that's 20 years before 20 years. Born. Well, your parents evidently told you about it. Then. Well, uh, 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 my daddy got most of it from Billy Dixon, and you hear a lot about Billy Dixon. Yes. Uh, and uh, they were real good friends, and that's where I got my 
literature and my... And, of course, Billy Dixon was the one that uh, was supposed to have shot he, the he Indian. He did, 1,200 yards. 1,200 yards, almost about three-quarters oh, of a uh -huh, mile. Uh -huh. And that was the turning point of that battle, battle. because it scared the Indians. They said uh, when white man can shoot and kill an Indian that far, it's time to leave. See, when they had this battle at Dobe Wall, uh, they came before daylight. Uh, the... Uh, there were some men, uh, these bu buffalo hunters would go in there for the night and uh, with their wagons and uh, uh, some of them were sleeping in the saloon and uh, the ridge pole, you know what that is, yes. holes roof, cracked. Uh -huh. So about three o'clock in the morning and of course they, everybody uh, uh, was awake and got up and helped with it and they'd just gotten things settled and, and started back to sleep when uh, these Indians attacked from around those hills. And uh, uh, they, that was one morning, and then they came back for three days. But the third day, then this, this uh, uh, Indian, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll show it to you, uh, rode out on a point, you know, where he could yes. see, and that's where Billy Dixon, uh, from the fort, or the, uh... He had a muzzle-loading gun, as I understand, a rifle. I guess. And, and he, sh he shot him off his horse, and then the Indian said, when the white man can kill an Indian that far, it's time to quit. And, uh, the, of course, the uh, people in the fort there at uh, Dobie Walls were... They were just trapped. They didn't have any way of getting out. No, the Indians had planned to just starve them out. They'd run the, they had run the horses off, and they killed two of the Seidler brothers who were asleep in their wagon between this uh, uh, stockade and the little creek, uh -huh. and the Indians killed them. Now, when uh, did they have schools here in the, the early days? Did you have schoolhouses here? Well, in my time, yes. oh yes, yes, uh, my, our school was, if you were at Groover and you were going uh, to Stanette, uh, the uh, Whittenberg house, uh, just before you get the house, you come up on a raise from the, from the Paladero Bridge, and that's where our little house, the little schoolhouse uh, was. Do you recall some of the early day teachers? Yes, yeah, I know all of them. Are they still around? <laughs> oh no, I don't. Uh, I don't know of any of them. They couldn't be my. Uh, you see, uh, I started school, or my brother. They went three years before I went to school, and my daddy was uh, uh, trustee. a trustee, and they paid the teacher forty dollars a month, and she paid twelve for board and room. So she got uh, what uh, twenty-eight dollars a month free then. I yes. Guess. And that was pretty good money in those days, wasn't it? Uh, I guess it was. And uh, how, where did the teachers come from? That was an adventure for a teacher to come out here. Yes. With. Well, uh, from around uh, uh, oh, Amarillo, you know, and uh, I just really don't know where some of them are from. Some came from Kansas. And we read a lot of romantic stories about teachers coming out here and marrying rich ranchers. Did yeah. that happen? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Some of them did, if they happened to be a, a young enough rancher, <laughs> a son or something, because most of the old couples uh, were still alive. Uh, Granford, what kind of cattle did they have then? Were the Longhorns here then? Oh, all kinds. Just any kind. All kinds. And you have a letter there that... Yeah, I want the, this is a bill of sale that my daddy bought a hundred head of cows in Amarillo. Uh, in 96, 1896, and paid $12 and a half a head. And were they grown cattle? or? Oh, yeah, grown cows, VVNs. I remember those. See, I was only two years old, but he had them a long time, and I remember those. They were all kinds and colors. And uh, the letterhead on this says J.M. Kendrick, proprietor. It's Dateline, Amarillo, Texas, October 20th, 1896. That's the old Amarillo Hotel. Is that right? Well, there's there's a picture of uh, 
quite a building here. Is that the Amarillo Hotel there? Uh, oh, I said over here. Yes, that's the Amarillo. The uh, old Amarillo. This is very beautiful handwriting. We don't have people that write like this anymore. No, you can't read it, can you? <laughs> can't read much. Well, that was a bill of sale. This is to certify that we, the undersigned, Moore, Williams, and Good, have this day sold and delivered to Joseph W. Jones, 100 head of cows. Said cows are marked and branded as... What, what is the end. Yes. Uh, uh, the end, well, uh, the uh, the marking they gave there, I think that was a, cro a crop and an underbit each year, I believe. Uh, I think I said, yeah. Yes. Uh, crop, crop those ears and underbit both ears. And uh, do you still have that brand? Uh, no, that was VVN. Oh, that that were the yes. ones he bought. My daddy's brand was X cross X on the cows. That was across the side. JJ on the steers. That was the jaw and the thigh. Uh, they also had a brand on the, the VVN on the left shoulder, side, and hip, and also an X over the loin. So uh, they'd been sold, I guess. And for the several times. And right? it says you're sold for the uh, sum of twelve dollars and fifty cents per head. And cows. Yes, uh huh. That's right. Said cows are warranted by Moore, Williams, and Good into the said Jones against any and all lawful claimants. And it's signed by the th those uh, by Moore Williams and Good, and uh, I think uh, the signature actually is William J. Good, mm -hmm. and it's uh, uh, witnessed here by D. F. White, who is a patent attorney. It says. I don't so, know. I that's don't very know that. interesting. I found this, and here's the check, and I don't know why the duplicate check. I found these things in. The, uh, my daddy's This things, is the so check with that bill of sale. Yes. It's for the $1,250. For the but family. why it's a duplicate, I don't know. The check must have been lost. Uh, I know my daddy did business in uh, Kansas City in the bank until Liberal was there. And then he uh, did business with the First National and Liberal. It's very interesting to see the beautiful handwriting in those yes. days. Uh, there was fine penmanship. In uh, now, this was my daddy's writing, and he didn't... Get, he didn't go to school very much. <laughs> but he had they had to work. They yes, had to work. He had a very good handwriting. You have something else here. That uh, is that what this came from? Yeah, this was in that. That that's about all I had. And I just you've seen these, of course. The dust storm. Yeah, uh, I'll I'll tell you about the this dust storm. Oh, oh, it was terrible. And my mother and I and Joe Lee was two years and a half old, two and a half years, and we were out the ranch. And uh, we saw a little cloud in the northeast, and we started back Spearman. And we got as far as uh, uh, my uh, sister-in-law's, Mrs. Jeffy Jackson. Do you know where she lives? Out uh, southwest, I about yeah. seven and a half miles. We, this, we could see it was coming then, uh, like this, a dust storm. Yeah. And we stopped in, at the front and w ran in, and she did uh, was in there, and we went then out the back and down into a cave about the size of this uh, room, room and not a thing in there to sit on. And we, this thing came over. Came rolling. And we uh, stood up, my mother and uh, Miss Jackson, my sister-in-law, Jeffy, and Joe Lee was two and a half, and uh, it had a, a flat door on top and then a door you know, the kind of slant door to open to get in. So we it was dark, dungeon, no lights. You know, they didn't have lights. Sure. And uh, and when that came over, of course, that was just dark as night. And that was about, I believe, it was around 4:30 yes, in the afternoon. That particular storm, I recall very well because I was in Canyon going to school at the time, and I was washing dishes in a cafe, and it was time for me to go to work at seven. And this dust storm hit Canyon much later than it did here. It was only traveling maybe yeah, 10 or 15 stuck. miles an hour, but uh, or maybe 20. But it was not a high wind. We wave. stood up. No, we stood up in that cellar. They weren't choosing it, you know, <laughs> and it was dirty as it could be. And we stood up from the time it struck until, I believe it was 8.30 that in night. there. And I had Joe Lee's, he stood in front of me, and I put his face right in my dress, so between my breathe. knees, so he wouldn't get that dust. Uh -huh. And uh, 
when it got light enough, uh, Jeff, his husband, and uh, two, uh, Judge Broadhurst and Mr. Doherty, were sitting in the car out in front while they made it into the house, and when we saw the light, uh, we came out of the dugout. It was about, uh, well, three or four hours. Uh -huh. It, you see, they had a golf course right there on the north they side, and everybody was playing. Everybody <laughs> was playing golf, and they saw this coming, and everybody left. But this uh, uh, Mr. Doherty, forgotten what he did here. He had family, and uh, Judge Broadhurst, he was the judge, and Jimmy Jackson, that was uh, my brother-in-law, and they sat in that car, and when it got where they could go into the house, why well, then they. Uh, uh, we saw the light just through the crack, so we came out of our hiding. And uh, it wasn't a dangerous thing other than the terrible dust. Oh, it was terrible. Uh, we came, uh, uh, we had our car, you know, and it only hit on about one cylinder. I was driving a mother's Chevrolet, and these two men were caught up there without a car. And Jimmy was going to bring them into town, you see, but the storm came. So uh, uh, they came in with us, my mother and, and Jolie and me, about 10.30 that night. And I lived where uh, uh, Roy Jones lives. Uh -huh. And the dirt was just that thing yes. uh -huh. from the front part. Uh, you so never right. saw such. I, I recall that uh, when I, on my way, I went ahead to work that night, and I, this thing hit while I was on my way to work and I walked about a mile and the last several hundred yards I actually crawled and felt of buildings that's the way because you could see nothing no you couldn't see and uh, I finally got there but you couldn't see anything more than two or three feet away from a light bulb we had nothing but no, you couldn't light say. bulbs hanging you couldn't down say. and Joel I guess can't remember that two and a half years no, old but, <laughs> but uh, Joel and uh, his daddy was in town and wanted to go out and uh, hunt us. He knew we were out somewhere. And he was in Bruce Shade's uh, uh, drugstore, and I don't remember who, remember who told him, but someone said, well, she'll find her way in. And when we came in, uh, he went to bed, and uh, Jolie, I put them in the far bedroom, and I cleaned house till 4.30 in the morning, and uh, I had the house all clean. You see, it, the wind kind of went down, but yes. it was still blowing, but no, not so much dirt. The, the, this was a frightening thing. There were many people that thought this was the end of the world. Well, it's yeah. sure. Uh, these pictures, this picture here has several buildings. Gwenfred, uh, can you uh, yeah, yes. they, identify they, those? Yeah, this is the old uh, Paladero Hotel. Paladero Hotel, where was that now? Well, it's down there now. Uh, out here in uh, Spearman. Yeah, yes, it's uh -huh. right there. Uh, you tell me. This is a, a picture in Spearman. There. That, that was taken from, you know, the McLean building. Yes. On It was taken from the upstairs, uh, second story, uh, back east. And the Paladura, uh, the uh, backs live uh -huh. there. Uh, this is a priceless picture. It's, That's, yeah, yes. It's a priceless picture. Uh, uh, Winford, there are so many rich, rich things. Uh, we're going to have to have you back again uh, because <laughs> one, one hour of this isn't going to do it justice. But well, I want to talk about your later years and when you got into painting, how you got interested well, in painting and that sort of uh, thing. I, uh, uh, that was kind of a surprise, too. That we had a, an art teacher in Guyman, and I was about uh, uh, 11, no, I was 12, I guess. And uh, she was teaching private lessons, uh -huh. and I wanted to, I wanted to take, but it was too expensive. Dollar the first hour, fifty cents second hour, and that's what they were, the students were taking an hour and a half. Uh -huh. But uh, my dad, he couldn't see it that way, or it didn't say much anything to him. But my mother, she uh, uh, it was in the fall. She said you can take some. Uh, lessons and I did well I'd say when school started we lived at the ranch in the summertime went to Guyman school in the winter so I uh, uh, took some lessons and painted my daddy's saddle horse 
and gave it, to him, gave it to him for Christmas. And from then on, he thought I was quite an artist. So, uh, and it was, uh, he was the one that asked me to paint the uh, Battle of Dole. Well, he says, while you, while you girls are wasting your time, he said, why don't you paint something worthwhile? He says, paint the Battle of Dover Wall. So uh, that summer, or uh, that spring, we had a buggy. Uh, well, it was an old carriage. And we he drove with the horses, and we went down, you know, uh -huh. to the... And, and you had to imagine a lot of... Yeah, that. well, you had to. There were just... Where these, uh, you see, these buildings were sawed and and uh, timbers, yeah. poles, and of course, oh, it was all green when I was there. But they, you could you see the still shade see the outline. Uh, outline. Yes, I see. And of seen course, that. then I had to. I got my literature or my ideas from Billy Dixon. Billy Dixon lived a long time uh, between the uh, Whittenburg Ranch house and the uh, Canadian River. And the first peaches that I'd ever seen, he had peach orchard. Well, and my daddy would go over uh, when they were supposed to be ripe in the fall and uh, bring peaches home. That was our first and only fruit, uh, green fruit. Fresh fruit. Fresh fruit. <laughs> I'll get it. Uh, it says here that... Uh, what was it I saw just a minute ago I wanted to refer to? You were living in Gammon when Oklahoma became a state. Yes. Uh, that must have been something. It was. That was what year? Uh, 1908, I think. 1908. And until then, it was uh, just territory. Oklahoma territory. Territory. And uh, uh, when did they have the run in the Sooner State? That, that's well, my daddy was in that and my uncle. Uh, that was east of here, you know, and my uncle got the Woodward town site. You know, you, they went horseback, and uh, my, I don't know where my daddy got his uh, quarter. It was only quarter, I think, quarter land, and uh, they, uh, they wouldn't let my uncle have that one that he had, had uh, put his, whatever you call it, Stand? Stand. Well, he's, uh, See the, they uh, had something, you know, when they, this one, oh, they just started and there were oh, they lots of people. Oh, stakes. Stakes. <laughs> uh -huh. I'll get it every while. <laughs> Winford, yeah. we're going to talk about your art career in just a moment. Let's get a word now. Our guest this morning is Gwenfred Lackey, and we're talking about some of the paintings that she's had. We have pictures, uh, photo pictures of the paintings, but let's get back to this uh, Battle of Adobe Walls picture. That happens to be one of the pictures that was chosen by a committee of the Where Chamber of Commerce for a postcard, and do you happen to have that postcard? Well, I, I remember I, that painting very well. I thought I had it, but... Well, it's the... Uh, look in my purse. Uh, Joe Lee's going to look for it for us. But let's, uh, while he's doing that... I thought I brought this it is, uh, along the side. This is a picture of uh, two of the buildings that were moved, uh, moved out of Farwell. Yeah. One of them, you said, was a former butcher shop. Yeah. And it's made into a home, and he has a... Uh, was that a blacksmith shop that was... Uh, that looks like... No, that was a liver barn. Oh, a you liver You know, they had a horse at a liver stable. Yes, uh-huh. Now, this is most interesting. This, these are log cabins, I guess, are they not? Yes, now, these, this was the Blodgett's first uh, homestead that they lived, and that was down on the river somewhere, you know, the Blodgett, Ralph. The Canadian River. Ralph's. Uh, yes, Ralph's uh, parents or uh, grandparents? R Ralph's grandparents. Uh-huh. And it has the fireplace there. I guess that was one of the means of keeping warm. Was that was their first home, uh, and it was on the river, but I don't know just where it was. Now, there are two houses there. Did yeah. they often have that kind of thing? Well, I, I never had seen it. Uh, but uh, we didn't have logs. Uh, that was made of logs. And a beautiful horse out there. I thought you, I brought that. I horses. thought I brought that. Uh, Postcard? Uh, uh, one of the cards. Uh, of the... Battle of Dover Walls. Well, maybe okay. maybe we'll find it. it oh, this here. must be the, the Lackey Homestead. See if it's in there. No? No, it, this was the Tyler home. The Tyler home. And here is a beautiful windmill. Windmills are hard to paint, aren't you, Glenn? Well, they're not easy. Here it is. There you I go. I know, put it somewhere. Uh, 
Oh, uh, yeah, so tedious. Yes, here's the picture of the... Now, that was the first painting, uh, my first. I, I painted that, uh, I expect you can see the date on it. It has the stockade fences there. Yes. And uh, then the fort itself, Adobe Walls Fort, is made out of adobe, isn't it? That's well, right yes. Right. One was the uh, one was a blacksmith shop, and one was a saloon, and one was a... Uh, now, this was a store. They had a store inside the stockade, and this was... Uh, 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 stockade uh, for uh, well. Now, in uh, can you uh, is the uh, knoll that the Indian came upon? Yes, the yes, there? very uh, right there. Right there. See, he wrote. They came this way and this way around this hill, uh -huh. and uh, he rode out on this peak. Winfred. There are <coughs> countless numbers of horses and Indians here. How long did it take? Th that must be a detailed thing that takes hours to paint one. I was two years. Two years painting, painting that one. Uh, but it was uh, uh, beginning to get checked, and it, it, it was in the bank. Uh, my daddy, uh, our house wasn't big enough, you know. It's, that was four feet by six, and uh, it was too large for the home, so the bank had about the largest wall and of course we were interested in the bank you know sure and he was president uh -huh. so uh, he uh, put it down there and it hung down there until we did some remodeling and they uh, lowered the ceilings and and fixed things uh, where is that painting now? It's at Goodwill in the museum. Wonderful. I, I just hope it'll always be there because this is a magnificent piece of work. So the bank uh, didn't have a place for it. This is uh, what well, the museum does, and that's... that's. And nice. then I painted the one that's... You, you've seen the one at the library. Yes. Uh -huh. So that uh, this one was getting checked, you know, and well, you showing age. That. Showing age. Well, I'll tell you what was on. I made my own canvas. <laughs> so that's that uh, caused it of, to uh, of white muslin painted with white paint. No, it'll they'll all check and Is that right? Hundred year hundred years. <laughs> <laughs> You're telling your age now, Winfred. <laughs> now this is a picture here. I'm, I'm trying to find the Lackey homestead. Yeah. Well we don't have You don't a, have a picture uh, of it. No. Uh I didn't uh, I haven't painted our old house and of course it's torn down a lot of the old time now this was uh, is on clay holt it's halfway between uh, hansford and our place it's about three and a half miles up the creek from uh, the hansford is that house still standing yes uh, or it was but it was made of adobe they made their adobe yes uh -huh. did you ever make adobe no no, but I've seen them. You've seen them. How did they make it? Well, out of clay and grass. Straw to, uh, and so forth. Uh, and I don't know where they got their... And they mix it up straw. and tramp it down and then cut well, it Well, they had then... Uh, uh, I really don't... Uh, I thought they were in little blocks. But, uh, uh, but uh, it was, I must, have been a, must have been a tedious job. But it uh, lasts forever and ever, didn't it? Well, they have cement on that now, if it's standing. Uh, plaster. Plaster. Now, what is, whose homestead is this? Well, that's old Hansford Courthouse. The old Hansford Courthouse. This is at that, Hansford, then? Yes, that's at Hansford. And when Spearman came, you know, uh, Hansford moved up here. And, uh, of course, Groover and Spearman uh, and uh, the courthouse was there a little while afterward. Uh, uh, until they voted it, and of course Spearman uh, got the county seat. Yes, they so voted the rest of the county. Uh -huh. <laughs> but uh, now, did you paint this from memory, or did you? No, I, I had a, I had uh huh I had a picture of it, but I remembered it, of course. Now, in the olden days, when they had court, what happened? Did uh, did they have a hotel there for the jury to stay in? <laughs> well, no, they just have to stay with the. Uh, uh, well, one lady had a few rooms, and I guess that's where they stayed. And uh, uh, let's see, I, was I had something on my mind now. I forgot okay. what was. Uh, about the courthouse? Uh huh, something about it. Uh, of course, that that uh, was a, uh, had a basement, and it's still uh, a hole. I haven't been over to it for quite a little while, but it isn't uh, uh, far. 
How many people lived at Hansford? Oh, I wouldn't know. Maybe 20, 25. Did you live there? No. No, we I always, yes, lived, you on always the ranch. lived on the ranch. Yeah, yeah. And yes. There are so many priceless things. How many pictures have you painted? Do you I don't know. know. I have no idea. Have but no it took idea. you two years to paint yes. this one. Picture. And they had the jail in the basement. Oh, that's, uh, that's what... Two the, rooms. Uh, of course, there were more more rooms, but two rooms. They had two jail rooms. Uh -huh. And they had these heavy steel doors that uh, were kind of woven, steel about that yes, wide, uh -huh. and just little peepholes through. Uh -huh. And uh, uh, an old gentleman, Mr. Uh, Ward, had a store in one of the rooms. They didn't need that much courthouse, you know. And they he had a store in, in one room. And when my daddy and would have to go to Hansford while we... We went down, my mother and my brother and me, and uh, of course she would visit Mr. Ward. There, in the middle of that was a nice breezeway in the summertime and, and the high ceilings and it was nice and cool, cool, so she'd sit and visit Mr. Ward. Well, we little nosy had to go down to see about the jail. So we were playing in the basement and my brother would go in, say all night, uh, uh, and pull the door You're too, and I, I and I'd let him out, and then I'd go in, and then we both went in and pulled it too, and there we were. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you didn't have anyone in jail, obviously, at that time. Uh, who let they, you out then? We screamed, you know, like youngsters would, and my mother, of course, it was quite a little ways, but it was a stairway, you know. Yes. They heard us, Mr. Ward, and, and my mother said we were peeping through those cracks. So, and <laughs> she got that out. must have been an experience then. How yeah, about uh, some of the early day judges? Were they circuit rider judges, or did they live here? Or no, what? they lived at Hansford. But you see, when, uh, before they had this courthouse, they had to go to uh, Miami. Uh, for court. And Mobiti, Mobiti for court. They had to go from here. We didn't until we got the. Our Were there any seat. famous trials held during those times? Well, uh, I guess few. Uh, not any that I just remember. Uh, they had quite a bit of courts, you know. Uh huh. Uh, but no murder cases that I know. Well, that would be most of them. <laughs> That'd be what? That would be some of them. Oh yeah. Uh, you recall any of those, or do well, you rather not? No, to? I just don't uh, remember enough about just hearsay. Uh -huh. How about the uh, juries? Did they come from all over the county, like they did? All over the county. And uh, I guess it took a while to set up a jury because you had no way except Pony Express, maybe, to get mail. To <laughs> That's them. right. How was the mail situation in those days? Well, uh, they came ever so uh, well. They finally got the mail from Guyman, to, oh, after Guyman, 1900, Guyman was built. And uh, they carried it in a buggy from, from Guyman to Hansford. And then it was distributed to people. Yeah, yes. But uh, now, I don't know just how the mail was. Of course, it came from Dodd City, and it took several days. Uh, to go to this Zulu post office, you know, and then on on the different ones. Now, how about the telephones? When, when we, did you first have telephones? We, uh, that I remember, was about, uh, oh, I'd say 1900, I guess. And uh, the McKays, uh, one lived uh, at the Coble place. Uh, W.T. Coble's. Uh, well, it's uh, Whittenburg now, you know, yes, uh, near our school. And one McKay lived, a brother, lived north of here on the uh, creek. And they had it on the, on the, uh, had the line on the, the barbed fence, barbed wire right. fence. And when they'd come to a gate, uh, they put some poles up and over the Went gate. Over the gate and then back on the wire, and they had it all the way. I'd say it was 12 miles, maybe more than that, from one McKay to the other, and that was the first. Well, uh, my mother and brother and I were coming to Hansford in the buggy and uh, came to this gate, you know, and had that wire, up, wire up over it, you know, and my mother was afraid. She didn't know what, she just didn't know much about telephones. They had her something, I don't know, but nevertheless, she uh, left the buggy, left us back with the buggy, and she 
ventured, the ventured and opened the gate and then got came to us and drove, we were too small to drive, and drove the team through and uh, then went back and closed the gate, you know. She drove through a long way and she went back and closed the gate. So when she got to Hansford, old Mr. Ward was the postmaster. Uh, he assured her that there wasn't uh, any danger. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's most interesting that they had telephones on barbed wire at that time. Yeah. Uh, could they? Did they have contact with any other people, or just just between? No, the two no, houses? just between. See, we didn't have any. No, that was just between the two. And do you remember your first airplane that you saw? Well, uh, I guess that was twenty after the First World War. And someone came That's first barnstorming time. through, I guess. Well, they would come through and put on... Air show. Air show. Take people riding yes. and so forth. And they just landed out on the prairie, didn't yeah. they? Yeah. And uh, did you ever take... Uh, when, when did you take your first plane ride? Well, I guess the first plane ride when. <laughs> She's uh, consulting with Joel now. Yeah, I was consulting. He remembers this. Uh, that must have been later on then. Yeah, it's just been... Oh, the last 20, 20, 25, 30 years. <laughs> it's a far cry from now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Did you ever dream of this country developing like it is now with irrigation wells and big tractors and combines? No. How did, you, did they ever, when did they first have wheat crops here? Well, they had wheat, but we, we moved to Guyman in 1906, and uh, they had they were planting small acreage, acreage because teams, you know, yes. horses, and uh, we we didn't have wheat for a long time. My daddy said he moved from Kansas down here because he didn't want a farm. And so he was a rancher all He was a rancher. <laughs> uh, the cattle was, was the lifeblood of the country for yes. many, many years here. Yeah. Uh, Gwenford, it's been most wonderful to have you as our guest this morning. Did you have some other things here? No, I haven't. I, didn't have I think this is most Well, I hope that... Uh, and these are priceless things. Now, uh, Gwenford, we are taping all of our visits with you old-timers, and we're hoping to set up a, a library of tapes in the library here so that they will be available for people to refer to in many years to come. And it's so nice of you to come and be our guest. Well, thank you. But your tape, maybe I'd like to get my foot on something. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I'm you'd be very right. I think you'd be very proud of what you hear on it. And we want to thank you again. Joel Lee, I want to thank you for taking the morning and bringing your mother. It's a real privilege to have you, and we feel honored that you would come. Well, thank you. One of our fine thank artists you. of the area. And you, you paint actively now, don't you? Well, yes, uh, uh, but I hadn't painted, uh, well, that was 1910, 11, and 12, and then I didn't paint until 57. And they, were, they asked me, said, why didn't you paint? Well, you know, my daddy died in 1919, so we were on the ranch, and, and I, was, I was the boss. Yes. Uh, and uh, my brother was in... Uh, in Bordeaux when uh, my father passed away with the First World War. They, it was just over. Uh -huh. And, uh, of course, he, he never did like ranching. So, so he didn't come back? I was the, uh, well, he came back and stayed a while. And, and he was doctor, you know. And he was in Milwaukee and Dallas. And well, that reminds me of another thing. Uh, what Did you have doctors here then? And wh what did you do when you were sick? Well, <laughs> they had a doctor. He walked. Walked from one place to another? And, and, uh, went in the buggy uh -huh. they in later years went in the buggy but i remember my mother and daddy uh, well it was before i was born they didn't have a doctor when we were born what were some of the early day remedies that uh, people had to treat themselves most of the time yeah yes uh, uh, what were some of the uh, are we on there yes we're on there <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's all right uh, <laughs> well i was just going to say that uh, well it was castoria uh -huh. And uh, just uh, some patent medicines was all we had. Uh -huh. I had the whooping cough in Guyman when I was 16 years old, and I'm telling so you, you had I had the whooping cough. It couldn't do a thing for it. I had a case of whooping cough. Now, uh, how about the croup? Uh, did you have the old-fashioned remedy of coal oil and sugar? Or? Uh, no, we didn't do that. 
Uh, I believe that was my uncle's remedy. It was <laughs> cola. <laughs> he always brought a little cola on the top. Uh, Gwenford, it's been most wonderful to have you with us this morning. We appreciate you taking the time to be our guest, and we'll be looking forward to another visit with you one of these days. Well, thank you.